I thought I'd use one of these kitchen vlogs to talk about a couple of ways that I save money. I'm not cheap. I don't like to waste money, but I'm not cheap. If I want something, I'll buy it. And sometimes I don't care how expensive it is. Last fall, I replaced my TV, my receiver, my DVD player, all my speakers. I bought an entirely new home theater system. It cost me about $5,000. I sort of had to because I had an analog TV and the cable company finally went all digital. My analog TV was useless. Two years ago, I replaced my computers. I built two brand new computers, built them myself. Money was no object. I bought the best components money could buy. I spent $6,000 each on those two computers. How many people would spend $12,000 on computers? Well, I would. I got what I wanted. So I'll spend money if I get what I want. I don't care, but sometimes there are a lot of times there are ways to not waste money on something. I'm going to show you a couple of examples today. So first, let's talk about bread. Now, when I talk about bread, I don't mean bread as a euphemism for money. I mean bread, baked bread. And I buy flour in a 25-pound sack at Costco. I bought this flour this morning, and I paid $5.39. I can make a loaf of bread for about 25 cents. But what do you do with a 25 pound bag of flour? Well, let me show you how I'm going to portion this down. When I bake bread, I always use two pounds of flour and I always measure my flour by weight rather than volumetrically because you get much better results that way. So I'm going to be portioning some flour. I have a scale here. I'm going to let that come up to zero. And I use this for pouring. That's why I have it kind of angled. I've opened my bag of flour and I'm going to start pouring flour in here one pound at a time. Coming up on 15.75. That's just a little bit more for one pound. That's about right there. Okay. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need something to put that flour in. So this is poly tubing and this is my heat seal device. It's called an impulse heat sealer. They're available on Amazon. So is the six inch poly tubing. I use this a lot when I'm doing my minute meals and I have a 10 part series on YouTube all about minute meals. Okay, there's a little bag. As far as what this cost me, that's about two pennies right there, two cents. You need to get the flour in there. That's when I use this. This is a wide mouth funnel. It's not a wide mouth funnel that I bought. It's the top of a jar. It was a spaghetti sauce jar. I think it was a Prego jar. I just cut the top off and I use it as a funnel. Why waste money buying a funnel when you just cut the tops off of jars and bottles? Okay. And then get that out of the way. I'm going to pour that in there to fill my bag. Make sure I get it all in there. And then put this on the heat sealer. Squeeze out as much air as I can without launching flour all over the place. Seal it. And now that is a one pound bag of flour. Whenever I go to bake bread, I pull two of these out of a box that I store. So there they are, 25 one pound packets of flour. I know it looks like I'm dealing cocaine, but these are packets of flour. Was it a lot of work? Well, yeah, of course it was. But think of it this way. If I'm gonna be baking bread, I'm gonna be measuring flour as I'm assembling my ingredients, or I can measure my flour in advance. One way or the other, I'm gonna be measuring flour, so why not get it all done and out of the way in advance? I'm gonna put these in a box. Oh, and there's one other advantage. Bugs can get into things, but these are heat sealed. 
these packets. There's no way bugs are going to be able to get into here. However, what if there are eggs in these packets? It's possible that one or more of these can have bug eggs in them. It's been known to happen. I've never had bugs infiltrate my flower, but just in case, if they are in there and they hatch and one or more of these is buggy, the only flower the bugs can ruin is that packet that they're in. They're not going to ruin an entire 25 pound sack of flour. Okay, I need to put these away and then I'm going to show you another way that I save money. You'll recognize these paper towels, right? To me, this is a big waste of money in the kitchen, but paper towels are so convenient. This is the only roll I have left of these. I save this. Maybe it's kind of like a memento of days past or something. This is what I buy now. These are a little bit different. The height isn't quite the same as you can see. These are a little bit wider, but these are a lot less expensive. And let me ex explain why. Let's go over some numbers. So I did some math. I know that this roll here, the regular paper towels, these have about 93 and a third feet total length in the roll. These rolls each have 450 feet. One roll of these is equal to about 4.8, almost five rolls of these paper towels. Yes, they're not quite as absorbent, but most of the time you don't use the full absorbency of a paper towel anyways. How often do you have a spill? It's exactly the right volume to use the full absorbency of a paper towel. Why is this so much more paper on here compared to what's on here? Well, let's look at, a, at an illustration or an example. One of the things they do to paper towels is they emboss the paper to add thickness to it, what looks like thickness, dimensionality. They make it sort of thicker, and I can demonstrate it. Here I have a couple of sheets of paper. How much room does this take up? It's flat. You can barely feel it on the surface, right? But now what if I add dimension to it? I'm going to do this several times. Okay, I'll spread this out. It takes up more space because now it's wavy. They call it pillows or cushions that are supposed to make it softer. Please don't squeeze the Charmin. But what it's really doing is it's taking up space so that you get less paper to the roll. You're basically paying for less paper and more air. These paper towels don't have any dimensionality. They're pretty near flat. The only problem with these is they're not perforated. So it's hard to find a tear place. It can get very frustrating trying to tear these. These tear easily because they're perforated. Well, I have a solution for that. Ooh, this, by the way, is what I buy. 12 rolls to the box. All right, 12 rolls, 450 feet per roll. And I don't have the register receipt, but I, I want to say these cost me about $45, $46, $47 per case at Costco. And the last time I did any calculations on it, if I remember correctly, the cost per foot for these was less than half the cost of foot per foot for the other paper towels. I'm going to open this up because I need to get to the rolls inside. Okay. All right. There are my rolls. Put those back underneath. Now, one of the challenges is to get these to tear nicely because they're not perforated. So it helps to have a little starter a notch somewhere that when you go to tear it, it'll tear at the notch. How do you put notches in these? Okay, I'm going to admit this is a bit OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> it's also messy, but I've been doing this for years and I'm not wasting as much money on paper towels. <laughs> Get ready. I have one of these. 
This is a little battery operated circular saw. I cut notches in these. Watch. Turn it over, do the other side. Okay, you're going to have this paper dust all over your kitchen. Well, at least all over your kitchen counter. But you just take out the vacuum cleaner and you do it. But that's what I do. I put these grooves in all of the paper towels before I put them away, before I store them. And then when I go to tear the paper towels, it'll tear at one of these notches. I have a top and bottom. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, yeah, it's a weird thing to do, but I'm retired. I'm home every day. I don't care if I use a little bit of my time to cut the notches in 12 rolls of paper towels and then vacuum up afterwards. So I got all of the paper towels notched and put away and I cleaned up the mess. Minutes. It just took a matter of minutes. One more way that I save money. <laughs> this is going to be weird, but I don't care. All right. Um, toilet paper, right? That's just money flush down the toilet, but you got to have it. Okay, so what I do is I buy the big <laughs> industrial rolls. Let me give you the whole story. I used to work at a place that had the industrial rolls, these big rolls in the stalls, in the bathrooms, and there was always a little bit left over when they would put a new roll on, so they bought some extra dispensers that they could put the small roll on when they put the big roll on to fill the big dispenser. Well, they didn't fasten these things down. They have holes in them to screw them to the wall, but they just clip them on the edge of the regular dispenser. And one by one, you can see this jagged edge, they all broke off. I found one in the trash one day and I thought I can save money. I grabbed it. I actually found a second one later on. They all ended up in the trash. Last time I looked, there were none of these anywhere. I buy these online. I get them from Uline, but they're also available on Amazon. The last time I bought these, I still have my receipt. January 25th, 2016. I still have three full rolls left plus part of one. I figure 12 of these will last me a year and a half. How often do you buy toilet paper? 18 months. And as far as the cost, when I compared these to Charmin, when I had a price on Charmin, cost per foot was about one fifth the cost of Charmin, which is very overpriced anyway. Charmin is awful stuff, but this is what I use. This is what I buy to save money. So those are some of the things that I do to save money. Yeah, they might be a bit eccentric, but I'm a retired old man. I got, well, I shouldn't say I have nothing better to do with my time. I have three YouTube channels. I have cooking to do and so forth, but um, I have time on my hands. So why not use it in ways that I can enjoy? And I feel as though I'm beating the system a little bit because I'm saving money. I'm not pray to the advertising please don't squeeze the charmin or uh made soft with pillows all that nonsense you see on the tv advertisement so again some of the ways i have of saving money